Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this function uh, when it's in standard form by converting it to vertex form by completing the square. And I guess I erased this. Vertex is h comma k. So to do that, we need to complete the square. But before we complete the square, we need to make sure that the coefficient of my quadratic term is 1. So to do that, I need to factor out that 4. And when I factor out a 4, I'm only going to be factoring out of my first two terms. So I factor out a 4. I'm going to say an x squared. Now this becomes difficult because how do you factor out a 4 from negative 1? Well, think of factoring out the same thing as like dividing by negative, dividing by 4. So therefore, this is going to be a negative 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth. Okay? So pretty much all I did is, you know, when you factor out, it's pretty much like dividing by 4. Right? When I factor out a 4 out of 4x squared, I just was left with x squared. It's just dividing by 4. So negative x divided by 4 is just equal to negative x divided by 4, which I prefer to write as negative 1 fourth x because we want to know what that coefficient is. Um, and I'll explain that why in just a second. Now, here comes the second. The reason why we want to do that is because we need to complete the square. Right? Right now we have a binomial in these parentheses, but we want to have it as a binomial squared. So we need to produce a perfect square trinomial. So to do that, we need to take b divided by 2 and square it where b is my coefficient of my linear term. So to do that, I'll take negative 1 fourth divided by 2. And square it. Well, negative 1 fourth divided by 2 is going to be negative 1 eighth. Negative 1 eighth squared is going to equal a positive 100, a positive 1 over 64. Now, I need to make sure I add that 1 over 64 inside of my parentheses. So I'll have y equals 4 times x squared minus 1 fourth x plus 1 over 64. Now, again, since I'm adding it on one side of the equation, I have to make sure I subtract or I add it on both sides of the equation or add and subtract on the same side. So therefore, I need to subtract. I'll write it over here. Subtract 1 over 64. But again, we have another casualty because look at, listen, 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 look at here. You have 1 over 64 is inside the parentheses. Inside the parentheses is being multiplied by 4, right? So therefore, I need to multiply by 4 over here. OK. Now we need to create a perfect square by our trinomial. We need to factor this. And this is where it gets a lot of students confused. So let's look at one that's easy. x squared plus um, uh, 4x plus 4. I think everybody would understand that that's x plus 2 times x plus 2, which we write as a binomial squared of x plus 2 squared, right? So this has all these fractions, and it really gets students confused. But the main important thing I want you guys to understand is if I take b divided by 2 and square it, that equals 2, which is that value right there. So really, besides the adding or subtracting, that all depends on what your middle term is. All you simply need to do to determine what it is is take b divided by 2 and go for there. So my b divided by 2 was a negative 1 eighth, right? That was equal to negative 1 eighth squared. So guess what? That is my, va that is my um, value for my binomial squared. So it's going to be 4 times x minus, now again, it's going to be negative, right? Because that was our value, plus or minus. So it's going to be negative. So we take b divided by 2, square it. Plus, now here comes some fraction work. I have 1 fourth, um, 4 divided by 64. So let's go ahead and factor out a 4, which would be 1 over 16, or minus 1 over 16, I believe. 16, 32, 48, 64. Very good. Now I need to combine these, so I need to get common denominators. So to do that, I'll multiply by 4 over 4. Therefore, now I can rewrite this as y equals 4 times, what am I doing? <laughs> That's not b divided by 2. That is a negative 1 eighth. OK? So x minus 1 eighth squared plus um, 4 minus 1 is going to be 3 over 16. OK, um, so now we need to graph this. Now, 
yeah, it doesn't really look that much fun, right? The main important thing I'd probably say is our vertex, okay, is we know it's gonna be 1 8th comma 3 over 16. Um, I really don't know on, you know, the piece of paper how I can tell you much better what to do. Um, what I would at least, what I would at least uh, do for this problem is I would uh, at least write in the vertex. So let's pretend here's one. Um, here's one, all right? You're gonna have to estimate, you know, 1 8th, 3 16 We need to determine, does the graph open up or down? Now we can easily determine that. Since A is greater than one, we know the graph opens up, right? Where that is our A. So I know the graph is gonna open up in this case. Um, as far as finding points, I would probably use your calculator function um, of a table function. I'm not going to plug in arbitrary points, but you'd want to at least choose points to the right and to the left of your vertex to find at least two other points, or at least one other point that you can reflect over um, for this. But, you know, in this case, I mean, with these values, I'm not going to go through a whole tutorial of me plugging in numbers with all these fractions. Probably just be easier to use some computer software to plug them in, but you at least want to find two other points. But we got the main thing. We at least know where the vertex is, um, and as well as how the graph opens up. But as far as the stretching and shrinking with these fractions, let's use that to computers. We did enough fraction work as it is. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that is how you graph a parabola by converting into vertex form. Thank you.